What's really going on with the climate? And what caused it? Is this a short-term problem or is it a long-term predicament? And why are these questions, why are these questions even important? We can't, as climate activists, effectively deal with the problems we face until we understand what caused them. We need to figure out what are the elements of the predicament that we face, because it is a predicament. It's not a short-term problem. Stopping climate annihilation requires not only political action, but economic thinking, social thinking, cultural changes, and spiritual changes. So I'm going to try to explain how these problems came about and sort of outline the overview of the mass extinction that we all face. No more than 15 minutes, I promise. What is the predicament? I'm going to read this for emphasis. We are in the midst of an unprecedented global emergency. Life on Earth is in crisis. Scientists agree we have entered a period of abrupt climate breakdown and we are in the midst of a mass extinction of our own making. This is from Extinction Rebellion UK and it's a good summary for our purposes. So let's see now if we can agree on what are the causes of this mass extinction. We're going to look at four major factors that have created the predicament we're in. The first factor is the severing, a thousands of year old process whereby humankind became separate and separated from the rest of life, the rest of the earth, the rest of the universe. The second factor is the industrial revolution. For the past 400 years, Extractive economies have dominated the globe and expanded their power where now they reach everywhere, including into our minds. The third factor is imperialism, colonialism, the way that large, powerful countries dominate poor countries and control them with both hard power and soft power. We still have imperialism and colonialism but our economists now call it globalization. The fourth factor is extractive ideology. Power never exists by itself. It's always accompanied by the ideology of the ruling class. And we now think in terms of extractive ideology, which is something that we need to deal with if we're going to be effective climate activists. The first cause is a long-term and slowly developing change in mankind's relationship with the non-human world. Let's hear first from Roger Hallam, and then we'll talk about Professor Timothy Morton and his concept of the severing. I think it's important at this stage to make clear that it's not, it's not a project about the climate. <laughs> you know, the whole framing of this around the climate um, is really a way of being duped by the corporate class. You know, the corporate class invented this phrase, climate change, you know, global warming and all the rest of it. And this framing has led the progressive class and the radical left and all the rest of it down this rabbit hole of thinking, we're dealing here with some technicality. We're not. What we're dealing with here is a project of murder by the elites of the most uh, vulnerable and marginalized people on the planet. And the nature of that murder is that they believe that they have a right to continue their, their enactment of their power and their privilege. And if millions and potentially billions of people die, then that's an acceptable cost. Um, in order for them to maintain 
the status quo. And as we all know, you know, elites throughout history have engaged in this gambit, as it were, uh, and they regularly kill people en masse in order to maintain the, their regime and their power. So in other words, how we need to frame this is, is, is not some unique, you know, episode which has a technical solution, as the NGOs would like to say. What we need, how we need to frame this is in a 2,000 year history, you know, maybe longer than that, of, of elites manipulating societies to extract power and materials and prestige, and as a byproduct of that, enslaving, killing, raping, you know, all the rest of it, uh, millions of people in order to maintain their system. There is archaeological evidence from 3,000 years back of extraction of iron, the extraction of copper, of smelting copper, not just in one part of the globe, but in diverse areas such as Jordan and China. So there's no question that humans have been creating changes to the earth and changes to the ecology for thousands of years. It's not just a modern practice. It's become the way we do things part of our makeup, fundamental element of our behavior. Dr. Timothy Morton is a professor at Rice University. He's written two important books, Dark Ecology and Humankind. And he's talked about an idea, a concept, which he calls the severing, which details the thousands of years of separation between humans and the non-human world. In other words, the problems that we face today is not something new. It's deep inside us. And to deal with this issue, Dr. Morton proposes that we need to think about a response that is not necessarily limited to political action, but it also involves a spiritual and psychological healing. The Industrial Revolution was a global transition of the human economy, the very restructuring of human life. It involved scientific breakthroughs, the mechanization of work, the development of new industries, the need to begin to extract on a massive scale from the earth, oil, iron, other products that were needed, including concrete. New forms of transportation were prepared, sea power, air power, motor vehicles. And meanwhile, longevity increased. Science led to better ways of living. It led to a higher standard of living. But it wasn't all good. Moving people into massive urban centers actually decreased the longevity of some people. The working class suffered terribly in the early days and has continued to suffer because of the mechanization of work and the alienation created by the way that business is done. And of course, out of all of this, out of these industries, we've had incredible amounts of pollution and over time, an increase in the Earth's temperature. In other words, global warming is to some extent caused directly by the products of the Industrial Revolution. And the refuse of the Industrial Revolution is a physical problem that we still need to deal with today. Imperialism is the controlling of a smaller country by a more powerful, larger country, usually an industrialized country. It can be done by hard power, military might, or soft power, economic pressure, cultural influences, the destruction of a spiritual life. Colonialism is a form of imperialism whereby colonies are implanted on the subject country. Now, within academics, there's all sorts of arguments about the differences between colonialism and imperialism, but for our purposes, I'm not gonna get into that. What's important to note is that imperialism and colonialism are inherent components 
They're part of the blood of industrialization. They're necessary components of the Industrial Revolution. Without them, the extraction-based economies that have spread throughout the world would not have been successful. And just as we have to deal with the fallout of the physical attributes of the Industrial Revolution, such as pollution and climate collapse, we also have to deal with the fallout and the problems created by imperialism and colonialism, because they continue today. Racism, sexism, the destruction of the spiritual life, cultural inequities, the extermination of indigenous way of life. All of these are problems that we as climate activists need to address when we take action against the forces that threaten our lives. An ideology is a set of ideas and discourses that describe the way that society should be organized. Power, power is never functioning alone. Power always has an ideology behind it. It may be a false ideology, but it always relies on an ideology. The basic ideology behind the extraction economies is the concept of unlimited growth. Okay. This notion pervades everything that we do. It's locked right into all economic studies. Unfortunately, it even affects ideas people have to stop climate collapse. For example, the idea of the Green New Deal implies that there's unlimited growth. And the problem can easily be solved by greening the economy and things will continue just as before. A completely false concept based on the false notion of unlimited growth. Other examples of the extraction ideology involve meritocracy. This is where people say if people are rich and successful, that means they just work hard and they're smarter than other people. And if you're poor, it just means you're stupid or lazy or a drug addict or a welfare mother. Basic concepts that demean people and force people to think in a way that's absolutely false. Another idea is the issue of equal rights under the law, that you're without prejudice. It doesn't matter if you're black or white, if you're a man or a woman, if you're young or if you're old, the law is fair to everyone which I think many of us know, is simply not true. There's one other element of the extraction economy ideology that deserves comment, and that's the idea of technological imperialism. This means that there are ideological concepts that are pushed by the elites that assume and argue that technical solutions are available to solve all the problems of climate annihilation. Giant mirrors out in outer space, seeding the atmosphere, a fundamental way of misthinking that draws attention away from what the real problem is and enables the extraction elites to continue to do what they shouldn't be doing. So let's quickly summarize. We're in the midst of a global climate collapse, a breakdown that's going to lead to a mass extinction. There's been a long-term severing between humans and the non-human world. We continue to suffer from the effects of the Industrial Revolution, both the physical impacts such as pollution and climate acceleration, global heating, but also the cultural and social impacts created by imperialism and colonialism, racism, sexism, disparities in income, the destruction of the spiritual life. So what is to be done about all of this? How can we move forward? Well, that's the subject of our next Activism and Medicine 15-minute video, coming soon.